Pop quiz, gents. When should a man wear a 32 millimeter width belt? When should he wear a 38 millimeter width belt? And should a man ever wear a 51 millimeter width belt? What about rings? How many rings can a man wear at one time? In the next few minutes, gents, I'm going to address those questions and more as we cover the 10 golden rules to wearing accessories for men. Rule number one, if you're going to wear it, own it. Gents, if you take nothing else from this video, understand that the key to wearing any accessory is confidence. I highly advise you practice wearing an item again and again, even if it's just around your house. The thing is you have to be comfortable. You have to feel good wearing the item for you to truly be able to own it. This applies to all accessories, pocket squares, hats, jewelry. Whenever you're going to wear something, you need to feel confident. You need to feel good wearing it. Now, the first time you wear something, it is normal for it to feel unfamiliar because it is. You're not used to wearing that hat. You're not used to wearing that pocket square. You're not used to wearing that necklace, but all of a sudden you get used to it. It becomes part of your style. It becomes part of who you are. And that's the key guys. You need to feel good about this for other people to see it as just part of your image, part of your style. Rule number two, accessories should flavor your outfit, not overpower them. To illustrate this, let's use an analogy from cooking, the use of salt. Many of you guys that have cooked, you know that adding just a pinch of salt to a recipe can transform it from something bland to all of a sudden it brings out all these flavors that you didn't even know the meal had in it. The key is just that pinch of salt, just a bit of salt, because if you put in too much salt, you're like, hey, a little bit of salt made it taste great. What's a whole handful going to do? Well, all of a sudden it's going to make it a salty mess, something that's going to be inedible, something that no one's going to want to taste. People are going to spit out. So you've got to understand that sometimes accessories can really just add flavor to an outfit. But if you try to do too much. You try to wear too many. You try to wear an accessory that is just way too powerful. That doesn't work with the outfit. It can overpower it. Now, at this point, your question may be, how much is too much? How much is too little? What's the perfect balance? What should I be shooting for? The answer, as with many things, it depends on your situation, on your status, on the country you live in, the culture that you've surrounded yourself with, the type of people, the work environment that you go to every day. So let's take rings as an example. I live in a relatively conservative area in the American Midwest, a whole lot of flashy jewelry is kind of frowned upon. I wear my wedding ring on my right hand though. Most Americans wear it on their left hand. I wear it on my right hand because I was married in the Eastern Orthodox Church. On my left hand, I've got a smart ring, which actually measures my movement my temperature, all these things, and it goes into an app. So for me, two pieces of jewelry is about right. That being said, I know some of you guys have signet rings. You've got family crest rings. You have class rings. And I would love to hear from you guys down in the comments. If you own a ring like that, tell me why do you wear it? Where did you get it from? Some maybe you had it passed on to you. And guys, if you're from outside the US, if you're in a culture in which wearing rings for men is common, I would love to hear those stories as well down below. Now, this next rule is going to help us answer that question about belt with, and that is understand the importance of proportion in accessories. So the vast majority of belts you're going to find out there are either 1.25 inches in width or 1.5 inches in width. But what is the difference? Why would you want to go for one belt style over the other? Well, in general, a belt that is 1.25 inches in width is going to be a dress belt. This is made to wear with slacks, with dress pants, with a suit, it's not made to be worn with jeans. 1.5 inch width belts in general are going to be more casual. These can be worn with jeans, they can be worn with cargo pants, they can be worn with any type of pant that is made to be worn in a more casual setting and is going to have belt loops that will better fit this size. Now, that being said, if you're going to choose one size and stick with it, I advise going with the one and a quarter inch belt. Why? Because you can still wear it with jeans, it's going to look fine. But the thing is, you go with that larger size, more casual looking belt, it's not always going to work with dress pants. Now, speaking of belts, today's video gents is sponsored by my good friends over at Anson Belt and Buckle. Now, for those of you guys that are hardcore armrest fans, you probably know one of the first videos I ever put on this channel almost a decade ago was a simple review of Anson Belt and Buckle. At that point, I was just getting started with the channel. I loved the product. They weren't even a sponsor at the time. And I simply put that video up and to this day, I still use these belts. I love this company. I love everything they stand for. It's a family owned business that treats their customers like family. Now, there's a lot of reasons why I love Anson Belt and Buckle, but one of my favorite parts is their interchangeable system. So, how many belt combinations do you see here? 
Trick question. It's not three, it's actually nine. How does that work? Because you've got three different buckles, you've got three different straps, and guess what? You can mix and match all of these so you actually have nine combinations. Next up, let's talk about their micro adjust technology. So, on a regular belt, you've got these holes every inch, and a lot of you guys have seen what happens to the holes over time. You get these stretch marks, or all of a sudden, right in the leather, you start to get tears. They wear out very quickly, and you can only adjust it to an inch. Ensign Belt and Buckle, on the other hand, leverages the micro adjust technology that allows you to go right here and adjust to a quarter of an inch. So, you're not only going to get a more comfortable fit, but the way it's designed, and I've worn this belt probably a hundred times, it looks great. And if that's not enough, let's talk customer service. So, one of the cool things I love about their belts is that if you've got a 16 inch waist or a 50 inch waist, the belt that they send you is going to fit because basically you're going to cut an end, you know, cut it to fit. And then it goes right in here, and it's a really simple system that uh, it latches right in there. Point being though, this one guy cut it too short. He wrote me this letter and said, you know what, Antonio? I cut my belt too short. And I wrote Dave, I said, Dave, I just need another strap. It was my fault. I'm going to pay for it. What's the difference? How can I just get this one strap? Dave said, no problem, and sent him a new strap at no cost. Now, what I love about this is that this is the kind of guy that Dave and his father who started the company, this is the kind of guys that they are. They treat their customers like family. And there's a lot of businesses out there which will take advantage of you. Anson Belt and Buckle, they love their customers. And for me, it's stories like that, great customer service, which sets them apart from all the other belt companies out there. Now, gents, really quick, interrupting my own video here because I just heard from Anson Belt and Buckle. They've got this special deal, and you guys know they rarely ever do deals. Here's the thing. When you grab their box set, you either get, you got to choose between two straps and three buckles or two buckles and three straps, and it's always a tough choice. Well, they said, how about we just give you three and three? So, nine combinations. This is a $25 value. It's a limited time offer, guys. Use that link down in the description to take advantage of this deal. Again, it's not going to last forever, and they, I've never seen them do this before. So, take advantage of this deal, guys. I'm linking to it down in the description. Now, these next two golden rules I'm going to combine, and that is buy the best that you can afford at the time, and it's even better if you've got a great story with it. So, I've talked about this Rolex Yacht Master before. This was my first Rolex, the first luxury watch that I ever purchased, and the story behind it is it celebrates my first million dollar year here at Real Men Real Style. I'm going to keep this watch. This is a watch I'll probably pass on in my family. Absolutely, I love it, and for me, it's the story, and yes, I did pay a pretty penny for it. It's a symbol of achieving a goal that I sought after with my business and went through years of struggle to reach. Now, that being said, do you need to spend thousands of dollars on a watch for it to have meaning, for it to be stylish? The answer is, of course not. Right here, I've got a great looking Timex. This could have meaning to you. This watch I just picked up because I thought it was beautiful. I wanted a nice field watch, something I could wear outdoors just playing with my kids, and I've done that. And so, it has a few stories with it. Not as storied as my other watch I just showed you, but it is something that I enjoy wearing. You can go out there, it doesn't matter how much you spend, you buy the best that you can afford, something that you do research on and that could be the story itself. The fact that you went after maybe a grail watch, something that you just saw a picture of it, you saved up for it, you bought it, you used it, whatever the story may be, make it yours. And again, it doesn't have to be expensive. This Orient Bambino, for some of you guys out there, this may be the watch you want to start with. The dress watch that you wore to your graduation, the dress watch you wore to that interview because it's your lucky watch and it helped you get that job. Another watch with great memories, my Yema Superman. So, this one, the cool story about this is I went to Mauritius, I got to meet the owners of Yema, and they presented this watch to me. But what's even cooler is I took my son with me. I took Gavin, I took Yuri, a couple guys on my armorist team, and we got to know each other better. We got to spend a week together hanging out on this island. I mean, it was amazing. And uh, I mean, yeah, we went off on the boats, went, you know, diving with whales. Well, they went diving with whales. I got sick on the boat and ended up puking up all over the place. It was the fumes that got me. Point being, I've got memories with this, and that's what you want with your accessories, especially your more durable accessories like watches and maybe jewelry. Now, we talked about the importance of proportion, but let's talk about the importance of balance when it comes to the golden rules of accessories. You want to make sure that you don't have all of your accessories on one side. You've seen that. When the guy wears like five bracelets, a watch, bra I mean, all that stuff over on one hand, but the other hand, not so much. Guys, I would say spread it out. You know, have a little bit of fun with this, but say, okay, can I wear a watch over here, maybe wear two bracelets on this side, wear a ring on one hand, ring on the other. I know for me, I, I you know I separate the rings. Find what works for you, but go for balance. Now, what about the old school rules of matching metals with metals and matching leathers with leathers? Do you need to always follow that? If you're just just getting started, sure, go for it. That is a 
basic rule I think a lot of men should follow when they're just getting started. But I think a more advanced rule and the one I'm going to include in today's video is the golden rule of know when to match and know when to mix. Because here's the thing, you can mix up leathers, you can mix up jewelry. In fact, I love pieces that actually have a bit of gold and a bit of silver with them. If you're going to have a wedding ring that is one particular color like silver, does that mean you can't wear gold pieces? Of course not. You can pull them off. The key here is to understand how they complement each other. There's a difference between just matching and complementing. Complementing is oftentimes they've got something that just works. And if you've got the right tone, that silver, a lot of times men gravitate towards silver jewelry because it works with their cooler tones. If you've got warmer tones, you gravitate towards rose gold and other forms of gold. When it comes to leathers, the whole idea of matching leathers with leathers is to keep it simple. But, you know, think about if you're going to wear a suede belt or you've got, got something that's a little bit bright. Does that mean you have to match it with your shoes? You got to wear bright shoes? Of course not. Or if you've got shoes that have mixing and matching leathers or complementing leathers. All of a sudden, you understand that these rules can go out the window and it's all about putting those pieces neck to each other and saying, you know what, I'm going to wear a gray belt with white shoes, yeah, not exactly matching, but it's going to work because you understand that these combinations just need to complement, they just need to work and you start to see between the lines. You start to understand what, it, and this is where style becomes a bit more advanced and that's a good time when you, it's a good place to be when you can build off of those foundations and you can start to have fun with your wardrobe. Now, that last point dovetails right into this next one, which is accessories are a great place to experiment, to have fun with color with patterns because accessories, guess what? They don't cost as much as your jackets, as your jeans, as even your shirts. So, when you're throwing in those pocket squares, you're throwing in those little bits of accessories, whether it be bracelets, whether it be a necktie, whether it be a hat, all of a sudden you can have a little bit more fun with those colors. And that's why we see in pocket squares, in neckties, we see paisley patterns, we see dot patterns. We don't normally see that in shirting, we don't see it rarely in suits. Why? Because in those pieces, if you can imagine, that's the canvas that you want to keep very simple and it's the accessories that we have more fun with the color. Because if you don't like it as well, all of a sudden you're wearing that pocket square and you feel everyone in the world is staring at the pocket square. Believe me, they're not. But if you feel that they are, you can take that pocket square out. But what I would advise is just get started with it build up that confidence, game back to point number one, especially with headwear, especially with something that you're not used to wearing, maybe sunglasses. Yeah, you've worn regular glasses, but sunglasses, especially Wayfarers, they're a little bit outside of your comfort zone. Just practice wearing them around your house, practice wearing them out just when you go to the grocery store and all of a sudden when you go out to meet friends, you're wearing those Wayfarers and you forgot that you're wearing for and you just get compliments because they do accentuate the face. They do draw a bit more attention to the eyes and that's what you're shooting for. So, accessories, again, relatively lower cost and you can get a very high return and they're a great place to experiment. Now, the next golden rule is if your clothing is taking center stage, you're wearing a really bright shirt, you're wearing a suit with a pattern in it. Understand that that is the piece that you want to draw attention to. So, you're going to want to mute down your accessories. If you're wearing a jacket that is just screaming for attention, you've got shoes that you want those to be the piece that everyone's complimenting on. Don't try to overpower them with a belt that's going to draw attention with sunglasses, with a hat, with doing too much. That's just, again, getting back to the salt, it should bring out the flavor. It shouldn't overpower it. So, again, if you've got one piece of clothing that you know everyone's going to notice that shirt with the florals, with the flowers in it, then pull back on those other accessories. Let the shirt be the star of the show. Next up, invest in the accessories that you use. And this is different than buy the best you can afford because initially when you're getting started, you're buying items to wear them and to practice wearing them. But you may find that, you know, you bought that nice watch, but you don't wear it very often. But headwear, of all things, because you live down in the tropics, you live in a very sunny area, you're wearing a lot of hats. Well, guess what? Let's drop that $20 hat and let's go into a proper hat store and you're going to start spending maybe a couple hundred dollars on a hat. Why would you want to invest and spend more? Because you're wearing it, because you love it, because it's helping you stand out. Watches just aren't your thing, but that headwear, especially because you're going bald and you realize functionally wearing headwear is just something that's your thing, go in and spend more. Invest in those pieces. I'm not saying you have to spend a whole lot to get great quality, but I am saying maybe invest more time, more effort in defining the deals, sourcing great deals, going to thrift stores, whatever it may be, find it, but invest your time in money into those pieces that you're actually rotating and wearing in your wardrobe. So, what video to watch next? How about the 10 golden rules to wearing Chelsea boots?